All right, hello everybody, jsano 19 here, and I'm going to bring you polyalphabetic substitution cryptography in Minecraft. You might be asking yourself, why are you going to do cryptography in Minecraft? Well, let me ask you a better question. Why not? Is there really a point to doing this in Minecraft? Absolutely not. It was something I wanted to do, so I did it. It's fun. Let's do this. Let's talk a little bit about cryptography. But first, you might be telling yourself, hey Jeff, this... These surroundings look kind of familiar. What's going on here? And I will say, these surroundings should be familiar to most of you. This is actually the basic building block of Seth Bling's original basic programming in Minecraft. I utilized his kind of scene here, his banners with his letters, and his ability to get an on-screen keyboard from his basic programming in Minecraft. That is what I've taken from Seth Bling. Credit where credit is due. Seth Bling is the mastermind behind all that. I utilized that to do something completely different. So all that out of the way, credit to Seth Bling for all this. The rest of the programming is all mine. So let's talk about cryptography for a minute. Cryptography is kind of hiding a message within another message. Standard forms of cryptography are something like a Caesar cipher or a, or a Caesar shift, also known as, or a rot 13. And basically a Caesar shift is moving an alphabet by a certain number in order to encode a message into something else. For instance, if you had your standard alphabet here, A through Z, and you did a Caesar shift of three, you would recode a message where A would become C, B would become D, C would become E, etc. A more common Caesar shift that people might know from the internet days, people used to use this to, from the internet days, it's still the internet days, but from the early internet days, people used to encode messages on the internet using ROT13. ROT13 is essentially a Caesar shift by 13, where the alphabet moves over 13 spaces, essentially half the alphabet, and A becomes N, B becomes O, C becomes P, and you pretty much write a message and you encode it that way. Now, these are very simple cryptography ciphers, and they're very easy to break because they're so simple. They're very easy to break based on certain things like frequency analysis, like the letter E in the English language is the most common letter. So if you have a phrase that's done in a some type of caesar shift you can kind of count the letter that appears the most often and assume that that's probably e and kind of work your way back from there to break the cipher so this is mono alphabetic substitution it is one letter for one other letter essentially across the board what we're talking about today is polyalphabetic substitution where there's going to be more than one shift to kind of mask the English language so you can't do frequency analysis as easily and still hide a message. So what I made in here is a visionaire table. So a visionaire table, let's go over to this side for a minute and let's produce our standard visionaire table. I have multiple keyboards up here and I'm gonna get to my visionaire keyboard. Visionaire keyboard, here we go. Let's create our tableau. Tableau, table, whatever you want to call it. We're going to run down and create the table. There's a lot of stuff that happens and then a lot of things that disappear. But essentially, you end up with a table that looks exactly like this. You pretty much have the alphabet that goes across the top. And then a line below it, you have the alphabet shifted over one. So it starts with B instead of A and goes all the way to the end. And that A is now added to the end. Does it again, C, then D, then E. Basically, you have the alphabet going across the top, and you have the alphabet going across the side. So our new visionaire table goes A through Z this way, the very bottom one starting with the Z, and then the alphabet continues from there. So pretty much, if you take a message with a visionaire table, let's clear our main table over here, clear it, and we're just going to write something like J Sano does... Cryptogra. JSA note does cryptography. Now, goodbye block. You can't use spaces in this particular example. Many online cryptography solvers will just get rid of the spaces for you. I'm sorry, I'm not that good. So removing the spaces, what we need now is a key to go with the visionaire table. So we gotta go back over here and look and give ourselves a key. So I will go to my key keyboard and keyword keyboard here we go and we'll do a key of let's say just minecraft so you might be asking yourself what is this key what is it for so essentially what happens is the key here 
in order to encode a message using Visioneer encoding, you pretty much write the word Minecraft or whatever your key is over and over again above your message and just keep repeating it until you get to the end of your message. And if you stop in the middle of your message, you just stop. So basically the J would correspond to an M, the S would correspond to an I, the A would correspond to an N, the N would correspond to an E, etc. So it'd be M-I-N-E-C-R-A-F-T, M-I-N-E-C-R-A-F-T, M-I-N-E-C-R-A-F-T. So what would then happen is when I try to encode this message, what we'll do is we'll take, utilize the top and the side basically the columns and the rows of the visionaire table. And what we're first going to do is we're going to go over and we're going to look for the letter of our coded message. The first letter is a J. So we're going to take the top row and we're going to go find the J. Then we're going to move down this row until we get to the column, or excuse me, we're going to move down this column until we get to the row that has starts with an M where our keyword is. So basically, if I take J and follow it down till I get to the M, boom, we're going to be here at a V. So here's my M. My J is at the top. Follow it down V. The first encoded word is going to be or letter is going to be a V. We're going to move to the next letter, which is an S over there for, you know, J S A N O. So it's going to be an S and the next letter in our keyword is an I. So we're going to move over. We're going to look for an S. We're going to come down until we find an I. And when we find the I and the S, it's going to be an A. So we should have a V A. Well, instead of actually doing this by hand, let's let Minecraft do this for us. So we will do a an encryption. So I'm going to hit the encrypt button and we're going to see what happens. Watch my little armor stands doing their thing. There we go. V A. And then it's going to continue on and do the rest for me. N R Q U O J L O takes a little bit more time with each run that it does. As you can see, my little armor stands, they're doing their thing. They're running around, doing all the work for me and coming out with my now cipher text. So what comes out of my, my encryption is called cipher text. And what my message actually is, is called my plain text. So this is my plain text. JSANO does encryption is my plain text. My cipher text ends up being Van Rekwoldjlaz. Yeah. You get what I mean. So pretty much if I gave you a message that said this, you would have no idea what to do with it. And it'd be pretty difficult to break because you wouldn't know what my keyword was. If you knew what my keyword was and knew the system that I used, you'd be able to break this text. And let's show you exactly how this works, that you can actually break this text. I'm going to erase my plain text and replace it with this. Now I do have to do this manual typing of this, but let's do V A N R U U O J L O Z J L O Z L T V F L T V F L T V F G W T V G W T V P L. So there we go. We have, if I move up here, I just typed the entire wrong thing. I, I typed it in the absolutely wrong keyboard. So <laughs> this does happen. One moment, please. Sorry about that, everybody. I've now corrected my mistake. And as you can see, I've typed in the Venerable into my message keyboard. My As my quote unquote plain text is actually crypt text because I'm going to decrypt it. But if I was encrypting it, it would be my plain text. And over here, I've corrected my keyword to now be Minecraft again. And we can run the decryption on this as opposed to encrypting it. And we can watch the bottom change to J S A N O. J S A N O does. It's going to say cryptography when all is said and done. But basically, what we've just done is we've encoded the message J S A N O does cryptography using a Visionaire table with the keyword of Minecraft, and then proved that we can decrypt it back using the same method. I think that's pretty cool, but Vision Air tables can go one step further. As you can see, we're just using a basic old table that starts with A, B, C, D, E, F, G, etc. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, etc. and a keyword. But let's get to true polyalphabetic substitution 
and do something crazy and actually bring up our Visionaire keyboard. Let's clear our whole Visionaire table and let's make a new Visionaire table. And instead of being just A, B, C, D, we want it to be J, S, A, N, O. And let the rest get filled in itself. I'm going to hit Create Table. It is going to go through. And what this has done is I basically added a keyword to my Visionaire table. So I've taken the letters J, S, A, N, and O out. I've put them at the beginning, as you can see, J, S, A, N, O, and then filled in the rest of the alphabet all the way to Z. So we have J, S, A, N, O, B, C, D, E, E, F, G, H, I, and we don't have a J here anymore because the J is at the beginning. K, L, M, same with N and O. N and O are part of the keyword, etc. You get the point. But basically what we've done now is utilized two different keywords keywords in the Visionaire table, we have a keyword that we're going to be encoding our message with by repeating the word Minecraft over the top, and then using the keyword of the table itself to be JSANO to encode and decode the phrase JSANO does cryptography. So let's watch this in action. If we now, again, we have our uh, Visionaire table set up, we are going to now clear our message again, and again state J Sano does cryptography, and you'll see this is a completely different, and encrypt it, it's a completely different message than we had before. It's because our whole table, Visionaire table, is completely different than it was before. Well, not necessarily completely different, but it's different because it utilizes a, a keyword in it as well. This is a very tough cryptography to just break because as you can see, you would need to know not only my keyword, which is Minecraft, but also my keyword of my visionary table itself, which is JSANO to break this message. And yes, I will show you if I put this into the message, we can decrypt it right on back. All right, folks, now I've taken the time to retype our new encoded message or our ciphertext back into the main message as the quote unquote plain text. But this time we're going to decrypt it and you will see that we're going to come back out with the exact same plain text that we started with. This all would not be possible without knowing what the two keywords are, however. So this makes this a very, very difficult to break cryptography method, though it can be broken. And I will prove that to you momentarily. So as you see, we have now decoded it to J. Sano does cryptography. But if we were to change anything in these keywords, it would not decode to the same thing. So why did I really delve into this in the first place? Well, I will tell you. Let's pull up some of the saved instances that I have over here. And I will pull up my save number one. Let's load it up into this. Now, what you see is... Basically, it's a decrypted message. This is ciphertext. For some of you, this might look familiar. For others, it doesn't look familiar at all. So let me explain what this is. We're going to go over here and redo our table and our keyword because I know where this came from. I'm going to show you guys where this came from. So let's first clear our, our uh, Visionaire table and let's clear our key, our keyword. I need to bring up the keyword keyboard and clear our keyword. And we're going to do a keyword of palimpsest. Now, a lot of you guys are saying, what is a palimpsest? And I'll tell you, I really don't know either. Um, it actually means like a scroll with something written on it or something of the sort. But that's really not the important part of this. But our keyword we are going to do is cryptos. And I'm going to now create my table using the keyword of the table of cryptos with our keyword that goes on the message of palimpsest and watch what happens to this phrase right here as we decrypt this particular phrase as you can see it's starting to make 
some letters that go together to make words between subtle shading and the absence of light lies the nuance of illusion. We'll get there eventually, but that's what it says. So where did this come from? Well, this is from a very famous cryptographic artist, a very famous cryptographic art display that's on display at CIA headquarters in Langley, Virginia, called Cryptos. Uh, Jim Sanborn is the person who put this together. He's the artist. He got some help with the cryptography and things like that. It consists of what people think is four different parts of the actual cryptography itself. If you don't know anything about cryptos, I really suggest you look it up. It's really, really cool. This is K1. They split it up into K1, K2, K3, and K4. This is K1 of cryptos. It was these letters carved out of a steel sheet with a table next to it that looked exactly like this with the, the basically the cryptos tableau next to it. Um, though there's an extra L over here and it was put out there for people to try to solve. And to this day, it has not all been solved. This is K1. K1 has been solved. K2 has also been solved, which uses the same type of system to do it with some different words. I'll show you those in a minute. K3 was a different way. It was a transposition cipher. And K4 is still yet unknown. So I really got interested in this whole cryptography stuff because I started studying about what Cryptos is. Cryptos is very intriguing to me. It's really cool that there's been something out there. It was placed in 1989 or 90, I can't remember. So it's been out there for 26 years and all of it has not been solved yet. It took 10 years for them to solve K1, K2, and K3. Granted, the NSA states that they solved it in the first couple days that it was up or the first week or something like that, but they didn't actually come out with the answer and tell people that they had actually solved it until somebody from the public came out and said, I've solved the first couple parts of cryptos. K4 is still out there. You guys should be interested. Check it out. I highly suggest it. It's pretty cool. But cryptos, the first K1 was encoded with a visionary table with the keywords of cryptos as the visionary keyword and palimpsest as the word keyword and it comes out to between subtle shading and the absence of light lies the nuance of illusion now you might be saying to yourself but jeff that doesn't say illusion that says occlusion well that's actually what it really does the plain text comes out to that from the the, the crypt text so there's a misspelling now, the creator of the sculpture, Jim Sanborn, says that it's intentional. Who knows? One day we'll find out. I will show you very briefly K2 as well. I will load it up here. We're going to load up K2. This is K2. It's a lot longer. Amazingly, longer makes these easier to brute force attack because you have more ability to look for letter frequency as you start to play with different combinations of letters. It used the same Cryptos alphabet, but it did use a different keyword. It did not use Palimpsest. It used Abskiza. How the people cracked this? I, the people who did it by hand, I have no idea how they cracked this. There was somebody who did do this by paper and text, or paper and pen, um, he, he claims. So that's really, really intriguing to me. But if we decrypt this now, this new one, you'll see this is going to take a much longer time to decrypt. But as you can see, this big block of random text, as it appears, is coming out to what looks like English language. It was totally invisible. How is that possible? They used the Earth's magnetic fields. The information was gathered and transmitted underground to an unknown location. Does Langley know about this? They should. 
It's buried out there somewhere. Who knows the exact location? Only WW. This was his last message. 38 degrees, 57 minutes, 0.5 seconds north. 77 degrees, 8 minutes, 44 seconds west. ID by Rose. Well, there you have it, folks. K2 of Cryptos. I will tell you, again, there's some misspellings in here. As you can see, underground is not underground. It's undergrund. That is actually the real plain text. ID by Rose is actually the real plain text, but it's not supposed to be. Jim Sanborn, after about six or seven years after this was solved, came out and said, underground. That's, that's supposed to be there. But, whoops, I messed up. I left the letter out. And it's not supposed to end with ID by Rose, which is kind of interesting for a cryptographer. Not really a cryptographer. He's actually an artist. But for somebody doing cryptography, to do, to say something like that. But I do have the updated as well, what it was supposed to be here. If I load up number three, there was a missing S right here that he left off for aesthetic purposes. And if we decode this, you will see the end of the message is slightly different. As you can see, that missing S changed the meeting quite a bit. Instead of ID by rows, it's X layer two what does it mean nobody really knows but there you have it polyalphabetic substitution using visionaire tables in minecraft that you can do change the visionaire table to with any keyword you want you can add any keyword you want you can add any message you want you can encrypt and decrypt your own messages people are interested in the download let me know i'll put it up there right now it's not going to be up there quite yet but why did I do this? Just for fun, because why not? I, I enjoy just tinkering with different things. I enjoy, I've recently gotten into cryptos and understanding it. And I highly suggest anybody who's interested in this type of stuff, check out cryptos. Like I said, K4 has not yet been solved. You could be the first. It might sound like it's out of your realm of possibilities, but you never know. The first people who solved the first couple parts of cryptos they probably didn't know they were going to be the people to solve it either. So otherwise, just have fun. Do different things. Explore different options. Expand your knowledge. So there you have it, folks. Polyalphabetic substitution. Visionaire table in Minecraft. Any good reason to do this? Absolutely not. It was fun. All right, guys. I'll see you next time.